Woo! Well, g'day everyone, and how are you doing? My name's Chris St. Clair. I hope this day finds you well. Today we are doing a mix video for the song that I recently posted, Please No More. I'm going to quickly go through the process of how I recorded and mixed this song. Let's uh, get straight into it. Starting with the software I use, this is Cakewalk by BandLab. In my opinion, by far the best value door at the moment because it is free, full functioning, uh, comes with heaps of stuff. Uh, it's at the very least, it's worth going and giving it a try because it's literally not gonna cost you a cent. I've been using Cakewalk for a very long time, so I was kind of very experienced with it by the time it became uh, Cakewalk by BandLab. Uh, it's also worth noting that this, in, or that the install that I use is uh, on top of a previous uh, Sonar Platinum install that I paid for years ago. So some of the stuff that you'll see in this video is stuff that came with uh, my Platinum install, but the vast majority of what you will see is what you actually get with Cakewalk by BandLab. I might even chuck a link in there, you never know. You never know. Let's get going and start with the drums. All right, here are the drums. Let's have a look. There's the MIDI. You can see here, let's just get my where am I's down there so I can see what we're doing. All right, hit play. So let's get the VST up. You can see the little Addictive Drums 2 is what we have here. Um, perfectly great. I Honestly, I haven't made a drum VST I don't like yet. You know, they all sound really good as far as I'm concerned. So, let's, uh, let's solo them out. So, we've got the drum science. So, how this happens is a little bit of a layover uh, photograph and stuff. Out in my performance space here in my place, I have a Roland TD4 drum kit with a MIDI cable attached to that. That MIDI cable runs through the wall here into this control room where I am out of my MIDI interface and into the computer here. And I literally just sit down and play the drums to the song. And that's what they sound like. Now, if I hit D on my keyboard to bring up the dock here in Cakewalk, we can go to the piano roll. If I just drag you up there, show you stuff, and I'm gonna select the MIDI. So this is the MIDI. These are basically which pad I hit and how hard I hit it. Let's try and get a little more into the picture. And so this isn't meant to be a tutorial, more of me just showing my work, but might as well show you what, uh, how this all goes. So you can hear all that. And along, if I click down here, you'll be able to see where the foot controller is. And you can see that it's here is where I've lifted my foot off the foot controller to open the hi-hat. Let's have a listen to that little moment, shall we? And then when my foot goes back on, the hi-hats close again. Now, so that's what I did. I just went through and just played the whole song on my Roland TD4. Now, not surprisingly, um, I didn't play it very well because I'm not a drummer, nor do I claim to be. So I was fairly tight. So what I would do is I would go through all of this. If you go up to process, quantize, or hit Q on your keyboard. Here, what this basically does, all of the notes that are selected, it will simply drag it to the closest increment of um, resolution duration. Yeah. Currently set to a sixteenth, and if we cancel that, you'll see that the grid is set to a six, uh, set to sixteenths. I've probably totally messed it all up. But anyway, so you take the quantize command, uh, and you use all of this to make myself sound a lot better than I actually am. Uh, but basically, it just tightens up the drums so they sound like they're being played well instead of by some old hack in a land down under. So, so they're going along all right. So once the quantizing is done, you have some fairly tight drums. Open up the VST. You can see that it's all there. I'll just 
see, and kick it along. Kick, snare, hi-hat, so on and so forth. This allows me to, when I bounce it all down, which I'm just about to do, um, to have a fully multi-track drum session. Now, a quick little thing as to why I do this, you'll notice that um, I've got my stereo channels, I have them as uh, a stereo panned pair of monos. Why ever would you do that, Chris? Well, I would show you, I'm going to show you now why I would ever do that. So when it comes to, uh, once the drums are quantized, I'm just going to go Control shift a on my keyboard to deselect the everything. I'm going to select just everything that's in the drums here. All, right, all the channels and all the MIDI you see get selected. Then I'm going to go to tracks, bounce to tracks. And by setting the destination to kick, source, source category, tracks, and here's where the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, trick plays off, pays off, mono. By exporting them all in as mono tracks, I can do the bounce in one shot. I don't have to bounce all the mono tracks and then separately bounce all the stereo tracks. By doing this, I just do one bounce and I will end up with a full uh, bounced down raw drum mix. The reason I bounce this down to audio um, is so the computer then doesn't actually have to drive that uh, drum synth live all the time. It just takes a little bit of the effort off the computer's CPU. All right, so we now have that bounced down. You could go in and take out all your silence if you wanted to, but an important point is hitting D on my keyboard to bring up the dock. Going over to the synth rack is to then switch this off. It's very easy to uh, forget to switch that off because then what will happen is the MIDI will still trigger the drum synth so it'll still play and it'll play over the top of this and you'll have copies uh, of it. So these are the drums now in uh, audio. Control shift all on the keyboard to have a look and Aren't they delicious? All right, now, again, my whole point was just to get this video up there because if you ask any uh, YouTuber that's better than me, they'd say, gotta get your videos up there. So we're gonna um, not rush through. Well, let's face it, this mix was a little bit rushed. Um, so I should mention that most of the processing and why you don't see much processing on this is that I actually do it in the drum synth. So by the time I actually mix it down, sort of the vast majority of the EQ and the compression and everything is actually already done. So what you get quickly is we've got some nice quick drums. And they sound good. All right. So that gets our drums going and gives us something to work to. I'm just going to hit Control Shift All. So then we move on to the bass. I used my Zon Sonus RT5 for this. Um, played through a Line 6 HX Stomp, he said, cutting away to another photograph or maybe even a piece of B-roll footage. Um, yeah, click it in, record it down to there. So yeah, Line 6 HX Stomp. So let's just solo out the bass and see what I've got going on here. Let's get my, where am I? These, um, these little numbers you see moving by the bottom side of the screen, I have a, I have a, a couple of Mackie control surfaces here, which is sort of lucky, lucky me. Um, shout out to uh, my band partner, uh, who uh, makes all of this stuff possible, basically. Um, I'll even name him when he <laughs> lets me. So the bass, what do we got? So let's solo out the bass. <coughs> let's hear what it is. I'm going to click up here. This opens and hides uh, Pro Channel, which is a cakewalky thing. And let's have a look. I should also mention I did try to break from my usual tradition. So this is actually kind of a bit different to how I usually mix. So um, anyway, so some EQ, some compression, some reverb, then some delicious cakewalk by Band Lab console and tape emulation to add a bit of saturation to the sound and just make it more gooder.
Let's bypass the pro channel on the bass and just hear how it sounds. So that's essentially the bass as it was recorded. And that's with all the uh, pro channel. Or acoustic guitar. Let's go back to the start. Let's have a look. What did I do to the acoustic guitar? Yeah, a bit of EQ. Um, I didn't compress this at this side because I actually had some compression on the way in, but these recently got added back into, these were previously um, sonar plugins. And then when Cakewalk, uh, when Gibson bloody fireworked Cakewalk, thanks guys, uh, and Cake, uh, BandLab saved Cakewalk, thanks guys, um, these disappeared for a while, but now they're back. So I'm guessing a license thing changed. So since they're back, I decided to uh, use them. So we have the old Cakewalk six voice chorus. Let's have a listen to that. Pass it with the chorus off. Um, I've only just noticed that I've actually got the compressor after the chorus, which might have been a mistake, but anyway. So, this is Supercharger. Um, Native Instruments was giving this away for free. They've got a bigger, beefier Supercharger thing which does more stuff, but they just gave this away, Native Instruments, and I've got to say, I've been using it a bit, but a bit of punch and a bit of dirt. Let me just um, bypass it. Kick it back in. That's without the punch and dirt. Back in. So yeah, a lot of this was experimental. This, this whole mix was just me just genuinely trying out a few new things. So that was basically the acoustic guitar. Let's go on to the electric guitar. All right. The electric guitar was recorded uh, essentially directly. I plugged uh, my Fender Stratocaster into my Line 6 HX Stomp. I used um, a new preset by John Willis, who is actually a uh, Helix bass dude. I'll try and get a link to him as well, but thanks, John Willis, for the... Uh, a guitar preset there and so let's solo that out and see how that sounds nice and low in the mix but uh, turn off the effects same thing got some EQ console emulation no compression for this one multi voice coming back on this was one of the ones that came with my uh, Sonar install, but it's Phaser. And we have our guitar. Not bad for something that was recorded directly. The guitar plugged straight into the HX stomp and uh, it's recorded from there. Solo, let's go straight there. Whee! This is my Strat. Same sort of things. Another John Willis uh, preset. Same thing, just a bit of this, a bit of EQ. Tempo delay. Okay, trying to get that 80s groove, because these are all old. I wrote this song in the 80s. Uh, I'm from the 80s. Uh, a part of me is eternally trapped in the 80s. I'm going to that one day. And uh, so I was going for the 80s groove on my lead guitar. And are we going for time? Oh, I'm not sure we're going to break it into 20 minutes, but I'll try and cut it down, okay? All right. Foxleys. Let's talk about how I sung. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, I used a sure KSM 42, is it? I think it's a 42. Um, all pretty straightforward. Let's have a look there. 
But long and hard about myself and what I've become. Uh, right. And all me and you, me and Microphone was plugged in straight into my interface. And again, I usually do these things in sends, but only one feeling right. I don't know. I just had the feels the to do it this way this time. Let's, uh... Oh, I ask you, please no more. Raw vocal. Compression. Wait slightly for talkies. And all me and you, me and natural born killer in one. Chuck in a bit of tempo delay. When only one pass feeling right. And the dark and finally with the night. Reverb. I think that's pronounced Raum, Raum, Raum. Um, but again, this was um, free, free from native instruments. Uh, I like that. That's good when people give stuff away for free, uh, especially something this good. Um, that's great. Again, I don't usually do these as inserts, but I thought, heck, Let's do some insertion on this song. I mean, again, it was about the 80s, and I guess it was definitely a part of the 80s in which was uh, all about such things. All right, so that's basically how I tracked everything. Let's uh, show everything in there and just hit play on... Oh, let's, let, let's at least go to a start of the part of the song where it starts, where I'm starting to sing. All right. And that's what you get when you mix it all together. Now, you just want to do one last thing. You, me, what I want to do. Remember, I'm not trying to teach anyone here any, anything here. All right, a bit of mastering. All right, first the EQ, the linear e, linear EQ. Anyway, EQ, reduce honk and mud. Now the multiband compression, gentle lift. You might even hear some pops clicking into that. Might have to change my latency settings to get this really right. And then finally, the adaptive limiter for uh, a bit of volume and a bit of extra shine. Uh, gird your loins, people. Here comes the volume. This woman I love, one an angel, but so full of pain. Interestingly, the reason you're hearing the popping there is because <laughs> the computer doesn't like driving the um, uh, the videos on the plugins. Shouldn't be too bad of us. There we go. All right, people. So that's how I recorded and mixed. Please no more. New song coming up this week. And uh, hopefully we're going to get this like and subscribe, share it around. Let's all uh, try and go on this journey together and hope it's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, thank you. Signing off. Cheers. Have a good day.